Welcome to AM Best Audio. From hailstorms to wildfires, natural catastrophe risks in Canada are expanding, as are the challenges of modeling this region. I'm John Weber for AM Best Audio, and I'm speaking today to Jay Gwynn, Executive Vice President and Chief Research Officer at Ferris. Jay, so glad you could join us today. John, hello. Uh, very happy to be joining you today and very pleased to kind of talk about what we have been doing for the Canadian insurance market. And we're looking forward to hearing that, Jay. So, Jay, Canada's vast geography includes diverse regions with varying natural catastrophe risks, like from earthquakes in British Columbia to floods in Alberta and even hurricanes in the Atlantic provinces. How do risk modelers account for these regional differences and what are the unique challenges they present? So, John, I think uh, Canada in many ways resembles the United States at a slightly different scale. So all the natural peril hazards that the United States faces are present in Canada. As you rightly said, it runs the whole gamut uh, of uh, earthquakes, hurricanes, and so on and so forth. Uh, And what really is happening is the climate is changing behind the scenes, uh, and that presents another set of challenges. So to answer your question, first of all, where risk serves the insurance industry with a range of solutions. Uh, we provide uh, solutions for these hazards for, from a risk scoring point of view. So as the insurance industries and carriers are trying to underwrite risks, so we have a set of solutions, as well as we also provide a range of catastrophe models for each of these perils. So because it's a complex set of perils, we have to build uh, very specific catastrophe models to address each of these uh, natural perils and along with it, deal with the geography and the extents and the local conditions uh, that uh, are present as these perils unfold. So for example, as you said, all the way in the maritime coast of uh, the Atlantic coast of Canada, they experience uh, hurricanes and it's a, it has its unique topography and the hurricanes are at the late stage of their formation. So we have to make sure we account for the physical aspects of the hurricanes by the time they get to, let's say, Nova Scotia uh, and account for it correctly. Uh, in the uh, West, we have earthquakes, uh, earthquakes from what is called the Cascadia subduction zone that can not only cause a lot of damage from shaking, but it has the potential of unleashing a terrible tsunami and impacting Vancouver Island uh, and the city of Vancouver and the Pacific coast. Uh, so each of these present a set of challenges. We have to have a good science team good set of engineers that understand each of these hazards and these purpose-built teams are developing these models uh, to account for their nuance and as well as account for the uniqueness in the geography and terrain as we go from the Pacific coast to the East coast. Jay, you mentioned that Canada's climate is changing. How are the models adapted to incorporate the impacts of climate change and what future trends are you predicting for natural catastrophes in Canada? So the climate is having a profound impact all across the world, uh, and it impacts different perils to different degrees. So if you take the example of wildfires, for uh, then the entire Western United States and Canada are in a general drying trend. That's why we are having these extreme wildfire seasons. Uh, and in Canada, the uh, provinces of Alberta in, in particular and uh, Van- uh, British Columbia are particularly vulnerable. Uh, and we have to account for what are the trends? Are they going to remain in the overall trend of severe droughts? Uh, and if so, what are the relationships of how much of the forest is burning? We have to account for the vegetation and the types of vegetation in different parts of Canada. Uh, and they have unique properties and responses to the climate uh, as it's changing. Uh, so from a modeling point of view, we have to understand the basic principles Uh, develop insights as to what we should be expecting as we look forward and build models that are forward-looking to anticipate fires that we think are going to happen uh, and not create models that are completely based on the past history. Uh, And that that is what is unique about catastrophe models, that it amalgamates uh, the past history, creates a forward-looking view by understanding the direction of climate change 
Uh, that was an example of wildfire. If I look at the case of floods, uh, again, Canada is very unique. One little, little factoid that your, your audience might find it interesting is uh, a lot of the rivers in Canada are flowing towards the north uh, and they are draining into the Hudson Bay or uh, in some other area of the north. And that presents its entire very unique uh, hydrological challenges. So, for example, you would think that the floods are happening when spring sets in. A uh, lot of the freeze and the ice uh, and the snow is melting, but upstream, uh, in the case of not, but actually downstream of the rivers, uh, the rivers are still frozen. Well, whereas in the southern part of California, uh, Canada, uh, spring has set in, so that creates uh, jams, uh, ice jams in the rivers, and the rivers spill over. Now, as the climate changes, we need to understand. Are these responses going to be different as we look forward? Uh, but we have to account for this unique aspects of the hydrology, the so-called ice jams and what it means. Uh, and, and we have seen recent historical events where, which became very severe because of these so-called ice jams. And you can keep extending these to all the natural hazards. So Canada is exposed to severe convective storms, uh, floods, uh, and flash flooding. Uh, wildfires, and as you said, hurricanes in the East Coast. So each of these have its unique response from a climate change point of view, and our scientists and engineers are accounting for all of these aspects and creating these forward-looking models. Customize your data experience. Best Link now offers an interactive company dashboard that provides company-level intelligence in a fast, user-friendly interface featuring interactive tables, charts, and sparkline performance histories. Customize the dashboard tiles to prioritize the insurer ratings, data, and analytics that best support your workflow. AM Best. Our insight, your advantage. Jay, with advancements in technology, how are scientists and engineers integrating these tools into the risk models? And can you provide some examples of, of how these technologies have improved the accuracy and reliability of predictions? Uh, yes, absolutely. The overall framework of catastrophe modeling is uh, a little over two decades old, so nothing fundamentally is different. However, as you your question uh, implies, that we have access to newer technology, and let's think about what that actually means. On the computer computing side, we have ever-growing speed in compute power. Uh, we have unbelievable amount of computer storage that uh, we have access to and think about the, what the cloud has given us. Uh, the underlying science is improving, and with that improvement, we can run mo more sophisticated computer simulations. The other aspect of new technology is the advent of artificial intelligence, AI, uh, and in particular, generative AI has uh, been uh, what's oftentimes discussed, but with the advent of AI in general, we can take what used to be uh, our physical statistical models and we can blend in AI to better simulate the actual weather and climate. Uh, and that's an investment we have been making for quite some time uh, to come up with a new generation of models that will allow us to understand each of these hazards in a concurrent way. So, so far, catastrophe modeling has been looking at each of these perils through a single lens, and we want to kind of look at it, look at all these perils interacting with each other in a more holistic way. So these technologies are allowing us to do these things without that immense compute power, without the access to uh, artificial intelligence and our ability to model, blend it with physics and the data and statistics. Uh, we won't be able to produce this next generation of models. So we are very excited to kind of bring to the industry a new set of models that allow us to bring additional insights. And your question about the predictability, the models are getting more granular. So if I think about our flood model uh, that we are about to release uh, in a week or so. Uh, so we have the entire country of Canada uh, modeled at a very fine granular scale. So every 30 meter pixel uh, now has a view of flood uh, risk. Uh, so that's the level of granularity. And this uh, 
embodies within it a very large amount of data. Uh, so again, this technology is allowing us to create these high resolution models. So we are able to better pinpoint where the flood risk is very high, where things are relatively uh, safe. Uh, if I extend that same discussion to wildfire, uh, the vegetation types at a very high resolution and high granularity is very important to understand how the risk is changing from uh, one location to another. Uh, and that's just another example of how we are leveraging it, uh, technology to bring very granular insights. Now, effective risk modeling often requires collaboration between the various stakeholders, including government agencies in the insurance industry. Jay, how do you collaborate with these entities to ensure that the models are accurate and actionable? And do you think improvements could be made to enhance these partnerships? So first of all, I think we have been serving the Canadian insurance industry for more than two decades. Uh, at Verisk, we offer a wide range of catastrophe models that I've talked about. We also provide a set of solutions. We have an organization called Opta that is based out of Canada and that has been providing the insurance industry a, very, a wide variety of uh, risk uh, analytics to better under, underwrite risks. But along that, Along that journey, we have been creating these partnerships. So I'll go through a few examples. So for example, we stay in touch with the regulatory body, which is called OSFI. Uh, they set some of the guidelines on how to monitor and manage extreme or catastrophic risk. Uh, so some of our modeling is used to inform uh, those guidelines. Uh, so we stay in uh, uh, touch with them. Uh, there is the Insurance uh, Bureau of Canada, the IBC. Uh, in the past, we have done uh, joint projects with them. We stay in touch with them in terms of our new solutions we are bringing to market uh, and whether uh, we can help them figure out a solution to deal with the flooding problem in Canada. So as you might know, uh, the flood risks are to some degree not completely insured, and th that creates... Uh, challenges on how to make sure that you have a robust real estate market, you have a robust uh, insurance market, and using better models and analytics, one can come up with policies and formulate uh, if Canada wants to go in the direction of having a national plan or to encourage insurers to offer coverage for these new emerging perils. Uh, then we have the organization called ICLR. This is the Institute for Catastrophe Loss Reduction. Uh, this is a industry insurance industry uh, led organization that uh, provides thought leadership in Canada uh, to uh, help companies think about these emerging risks and catastrophe risks. Uh, we are members of ICLR over the years. We have provided uh, thought leadership by presenting in forums and conferences. Uh, so we have quite a bit of activity happening in Canada through some of these examples just I, as I, I cited. Uh, and uh, this is all with the purpose of making sure we are me meeting the insurance industry's needs in Canada and bringing some of the best tools and solutions so that uh, the insurance industry there is robust uh, and feels that they have the best tools to better deal with the future challenges of climate change. Well, Jay, this has been very interesting. And of course, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you, John. Pleasure is mine. Uh, it was great. A great set of questions. Thank you. That was Jay Gwynn, Executive Vice President and Chief Research Officer at Verisk. And I'm John Weber for I Am Best Audio. Looking to get the full attention of the insurance industry? We have the platforms that will do just that. Whether it be AM Best TV, AM Best Audio, Best Review Magazine, or Best Day. Find out more by calling AM Best Advertising Sales at 908 439 2200, extension 5399, and have a great day.